80% of athletes show abnormalities in their ECG traces that may be mistaken as pathological. You, as a physician, may leave the interpretation of the ECG to your own personal experience or use standard ECG criteria for the non-athletic population. This poses a significant risk in misdiagnosing athletes and heart failure patients alike. In professional athletes such as Toby Reader of the Phoenix Coyotes, it is not uncommon to see a resting heart rate below 60 beats per minute in the absence of dizziness or syncope. Aerobic training in high-performance athletes may induce intrinsic adaptations so that a heart rate even below 30 beats per minute with two-second pauses in between is considered normal while sleeping. These short pauses may manifest as first-degree AV block but are generally not of concern in the athletic population. Because left ventricular hypertrophy is common in athletes, you may see an increased QRS amplitude due to an increased muscle mass. What you should not see in athletes is an increase in P-wave amplitude, which is indicative of atrial hypertrophy. 50% of athletes exhibit right bundle branch block in their ECG, occurring more frequently among males. This delay is not a true block in conduction, but rather due to an increase in right ventricular mass, which increases conduction time. It is important to keep in mind the pathological states that also express right bundle branch block including arrhythmogenic right ventricular cardiomyopathy and Brugada syndrome. What you will never see in athletes. Symmetrical T-wave inversion in leads V2 to V4, or Q-waves with an amplitude greater than one-third of the QRS complex and longer than 0.04 milliseconds. These are signs of infarction and should be treated immediately, regardless of athletic status. We hope that these parameters will help you to differentiate between physiological patterns that should cause no alarm and those that require additional testing to exclude or confirm an underlying cardiovascular condition in athletic patients.